the campus of North Carolina Central University is humming with anticipation. I got here at 6.30 this morning. You're a bit excited. Very excited, very excited. I just want to be a part of history, basically. For the students at this historically black university, America's first public liberal arts college for African Americans, there's one policy they want to hear about most from any visiting politician. Anything to keep my tuition down and keep me in school, I'm all for it. But for the most part, people are just after a glimpse of the Obama magic. Excited about hearing First Lady Obama speak to us and get us pumped up for the election. This state has one of the largest African American populations in the country. More than one in five North Carolinians are black, making them a key constituency. The people of North Carolina aren't used to receiving this much political attention during campaign season. But at the last election, the state went Democrat for the first time in 32 years, and it's now a key battleground for the Romney camp if it's going to win the White House and roll back President Obama's agenda. All our progress all that, it's all on the line this November. It's all at stake. And as my husband has said, this election will be even closer than the last one. Think back to what happened in this state in 2008. Back then, we won North Carolina by 14,000 votes. All right, now, that's just five votes per precinct. Do you hear me? Five. The First Lady has been called the President's secret weapon, and she expertly arms the crowd with arguments to convince undecided voters. Tell them about the millions of jobs Barack has created. Tell them about the health reform he passed. Tell them about all those kids who can finally attend college. Tell them how Barack ended the war in Iraq. Tell them how we... Absolutely. Are you fired? Are you ready to go? All right, then let's get to work. Thank you. God bless. Afterwards, the rock star welcome continues. There's no doubting the Obama's popularity with this crowd. But in the 30 minute speech, there was one policy position the president took a few months ago that didn't get a mention. This is an ABC News special report. There is big breaking news from the White House. This is an historic political and cultural moment in this country. Uh, at a certain point, I've just concluded that um, for me personally, it is important for me to go ahead and affirm that uh, I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. I actually, if I'm honest, had a moment saying, oh my God, I think he just lost the presidency. This congregation in suburban Charlotte is mostly lesbian, gay and transsexual. Some parishioners drive a couple of hours to be here at a church where they feel accepted. But in this conservative state, not all of them are out to their communities and their identity needs to be protected. Bishop Tonya Rawls says the mainstream church's stance has caused enormous damage. The wreckage of not embracing the gay and lesbian child of God within the black church has done something that has never happened actually in our history as black people in America. And that was to dare present something tied to personage that says God cannot accept you and does not love you as you are. Because even as a black slave, their skin color, yes, was black, but their soul was free in, in God. And we stood on that. It was our faith that got us through slavery, that got us through Jim Crow, got us through much of the oppression of the civil rights era, right? We marched on our faith, we sang faith songs, but what happens if someone suggests to me that I no longer have a right to those songs? 
The president's support for gay marriage came the day after a controversial referendum here. It came right on the heels of a pretty big landslide win with the state saying, we don't want anything that even resembles gay marriage in the state of North Carolina. And to have a sitting president say, well, actually, I support it, was huge. Bishop Rawls believes the president's announcement has created a space for people of faith to talk about homosexuality. In one-on-one -on -one conversations, what I find is that in those discussions, many of my black colleagues are much less hardline. I am finding an increasing number of clergy, black and white, who are willing to do the journey and to say, I don't get it all, but this is worth exploration. And it is also worth exploration with those whose views differ from mine. I want to thank all of you for coming out for this news conference today. My name is William Owens. I'm the founder and the president of the Coalition of African American Pastors. Not all black clergy are interested in exploring. CAP created national headlines by accusing Barack Obama of selling out. But they have chosen something to cater to the homosexual community, to cater to Hollywood, to cater to the big money people. They have chosen that course and just ignored the people that put the president where he is. The president is in the White House because of the civil rights movement, and I was a leader in that movement. And I didn't march one inch, one foot, one yard for a man to marry a man and a woman to marry a woman. He has not done a smart thing, and it might cost him the election. Had you heard of them before? I'd never heard of them before. And I thought it was weird that no one had ever heard of this organization before. And for them to be getting so much press, and it was in the newspaper, it was on the internet, it was on TV, and I'm just like, wait a minute, who are these people? Tuan Ngai is a gay rights activist. In the wake of Cap's press conference, he tried to set up a meeting with Reverend Owens to discuss the issues. He says that when Owens failed to respond to his calls, he started a petition and made plans to fly to Memphis to deliver it to his church. I'd say the week of the delivery date, I found out that Metropolitan Institutional Church does not exist. The address that they had listed was a residence. Um, I also found out that the 3,800 plus pastors and churches that he said was a part of his coalition was actually about 20 people. That wasn't the only part of Reverend Owen's story Twan had trouble with. There's no record of him participating in any type of civil rights demonstrations, which he said he did in Nashville from 1958 to 1961. There's no record of him anywhere. No pictures. <laughs> um, the organizers don't know who he is. Finally, CAP's claim to be a non-political organisation was also called into question when it was discovered that a right-wing lobby group, the National Organisation for Marriage, had channeled $20,000 to CAP via Owen's wife. And then that makes me wonder how many other black pastors have been paid to do this. And it makes me wonder if money wasn't a part of the deal, would you be doing this? So I you know, we're standing for holiness and blah, blah, blah. No, you're being paid to do this. So it, it makes me question their integrity. What is, what's your opinion of CAP now? Fraud. Is CAP a fraud? CAP's not a fraud. CAP's not a fraud. CAP is a struggling institution, a struggling organization. CAP is small, but CAP has a big and wide constituency. It's called Those Who Believe and Read the Bible. Bishop David Hall is a member of CAP and a friend of Reverend Owens. If you could buy somebody with $20,000, he's in pitiful shape. <laughs> uh, I think that's laughable. And so uh, I uh, would say this, that if he has some political leanings toward the, toward the, the, the right, they're his 
and he can express them. I have my political feelings. I voted for President Obama. I'm probably going to vote for him again. Bishop Hall insists Owens did have a church in Memphis before he moved away, and that he was at least a foot soldier in the civil rights movement. But the number of pastors Cap truly represents is less certain. That's hard to say. Uh, officially, we have talked about getting together and starting membership drives. Uh, everywhere we go, we have good crowds. We've not really formalized a well-defined and structured membership. On a rainy Saturday, Memphis's Gay Pride Rally has drawn a small but enthusiastic crowd. Ironically enough, it's being held in Church Park. During segregation, this was the only park coloured people were allowed to use. But Bishop Hall sees no equivalence between the civil rights movement and gay rights. Rights for what? The right to be married? Yeah. The right for a woman to marry a man? Yeah. But a right for a man to marry a man? I can't even phantom that. It doesn't make sense. There is, there, there is nothing conceivable that a man and a man can do to create a family. Maurice McKinnon likes to think of his barber's shop as an African-American country club, a place for people to talk and relax. Here at Goodfellas, Obama's same-sex marriage support doesn't seem to have created much of a fuss. Uh, I can't knock him for, you know, trying to get the votes, but I don't really believe in it. Is it going to stop you from turning out? No, it's not going to stop me from voting for him. You know who you're going to vote for? Of course, uh, I'm going to vote for Obama. Yeah. For Maurice, the biggest issue affecting his vote is something far more mundane than gay rights. Me personally, uh, being a, a private business owner, self-employed, and employing, have employees that I think insurance, and that's one of the main reasons that I am kind of trying to stand behind the healthcare reform because I think everyone needs some kind of healthcare. I think it's more nuanced than many people who immediately said, oh my gosh, that means African Americans won't vote for him. So Mary Curtis is a political journalist who's lived in North Carolina for 17 years. She says the idea that blacks are single issue voters is insulting. But that's a mistake that many people make about African American voters when they try to lump them as one monolith. They voted for Obama because he's black or they won't like it because of same sex marriage. And I think that's a mistake. If African Americans are individuals who th are, think thoughtfully about every issue and make decisions based on those issues. And I can't see that many voting for Romney because they disagree with him on so many other issues. President of the United States of America, Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney is a few points ahead of President Obama in the polling in North Carolina. But despite high profile black figures like Condoleezza Rice, the Republicans are still struggling to connect with African Americans at a grassroots level, a phenomenon Mary Curtis experiences firsthand. Whenever I go to Republican uh, conventions or meetings or some of the events with Mitt Romney, I always am asked, you know, to give a comment, you know, about the candidate, and I have to say, well, I'm not here for the rally. I'm a journalist, and the journalist, oh darn, you know, I wanted to get a black person because you literally can count the black people. In fact, polling among African Americans has Obama leading 94% to zero over Mitt Romney. But the issue for the Democrats is turnout. Mm -hmm. And I want you to sign everything here that in the yellow, okay? Okay, sweetheart. Are you excited about Obama being put back in the White House? Yeah. Yes, you are. Well, yeah. go ahead and get yourself on the camera, girl. Okay. You know, just oh, no, I paid for work. No, 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 no. Getting African Americans to cast a ballot has long been a problem. But now an army of volunteers like Sarah Chambers are out helping register new voters. The Obama campaign has 
black women in particular are out there for him. And you see them coming out now more and more as it, get close, as it gets closer to the campaign. When you go out and see any of these voter registration tables, you'll see a lot of African American women. Ultimately, Obama's gay marriage support won't alter the outcome of the election on its own. But it's just one of a raft of progressive stances that have at times divided his base. When everybody's got a chance to get ahead, that's when we do well. Inspiring his base to support him once again is now Obama's biggest battle.